deep pleasure to be able to introduce Dr. James Good in his new incarnation <clears throat> as the uh, apostle of uh, telemedicine, ICU throughout the United States. Jim, it's always a pleasure. First day of Grand Rounds here in July 71. And we began the, the process here. And I left in uh, July of seven, uh, 2007 because I decided to go into rural medicine. I figured, I figured my career here had, had run its uh, gamut. I wanted to get on another curve. Uh, a curve which I thought would be innovative, brand new to me, would take me to rural America. So that's really why I made that change in July of 2007. Um, now, Firstly, I'm going to do what I always do in the morning, take you on rounds. Um, every morning at 8.30, 9.30, I take rounds. We have a room at the Palm Drive Hospital called the Solomon <coughs> Telemedicine Hub, named after one of our own physicians, Luke Solomon, who is a, quite a fellow. And he'd be a whole lecture in and of himself. Um, he's deceased right now. Um, and from 8.30 to 9, we go to one of five ICUs by the internet and I see patients on rounds. And these rounds can be partaken by any one of the five ICUs, by what's called multipresence. They can join me as I look via a robot at patients as though they are me. Uh, this is a teaching technique. And I'm gonna take you on rounds with me because I have to make rounds every morning and I'm gonna give you exactly what I do. Patient rounds and presentations are still what I do because that's the core of really rounds. I don't like rounds that are canned and didactic, that rely upon um, a slideshow. I think they should be live and they should emphasize patient care. So what I'm gonna do is initially take you on rounds with me the way I do every day except I'm target 8.10 as opposed to 8.30. And I do this Monday through Friday. And the people who join these rounds are about 10 to 15 people that come drive the doctors and medical staff. And also any doctor who wants to cool flew into us via the multipresence in any one of our ICUs coming around with me. Right now, I make rounds with five ICUs. The ICUs are Palm Drive, Healdsburg, Ukiah, Willits, and Fort Bragg, these five, okay? And I'm gonna take you around today. We're gonna to start in Willits, then we're gonna go to Fort Bragg, then Ukiah, then Palm Drive, <laughs> if we have time. I'll, I'll see patients there that I'm currently consulting. The whole idea of Lou Salman I got is Number one, we had had it for urban medicine. We've been in urban medicine for years. Places like Kaiser, Kaiser's urban medicine. Sutter, Sutter's urban medicine. We decided to go into a new realm, and we looked up how many rural hospitals there were in the United States who have less than 30 beds and uh, um, are economically strapped. They're almost an endangered species. There are 3,013 of these hospitals in the 50 states. Most are in places like Kansas, and Nebraska, and Texas. They aren't in places like Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Um, they happen to be where the populations are very uh, <coughs> sparse. So, Lou and I said, how are we gonna get to these hospitals? We first of all tried television to television. That required a T1 line, which is very expensive. And every consultant you get, you had to run a T1 line too, so we gave that up. Then we tried, um, uh, some equipment that had a camera over every bed. Too expensive, we couldn't afford it. That's the VisiQ system, that's what you have. Here. Real hospitals can't afford that, too expensive. And then we tried uh, different type of carts. The carts didn't work because the nurses wouldn't push them anywhere we wanted to push them. <laughs> nurses are very independent. And we'd say, take the cart to the ER. They say, you take the cart to the ER. <laughs> so we said, we have to have a mobile unit we can run ourselves. So we found a robot that we can run ourselves. So we can go ourselves from the ICU to the ER, to the ward, uh, whatever. So we got our own wheels, if you will. And we found a little company in Santa Barbara, only about 100 employees, making a robot. And we adapted that robot to ICU work. They've done some of it, but not a lot. And we've had a really good partnership in Yara Lori here from Santa Barbara, from this company. And they help me when I go around and do things. <coughs> and I have no economic ties to this company. I still have the old school no kickbacks, percentages, etc. We work with partners, but I have no tie to any company. I'm beholden to nobody. Okay? It's very important. <laughs> In terms of uh, operating. Um, now, I start the rounds every day with a poem. And I have a month of a poem. You have to be in the Wordsworth month. Next month is the Shelley month. And I always have a poem, and the poem is always copied, and it is faxed to each of the five ICUs. So we start with a poem. 
And this is Wordsworth once, so I'll give you a Wordsworth the poem. Wordsworth was the most Freudian of poets. He believed in the mind, and he believed that the man is made by age five. Uh, he was really Freudian, that's Freud, you know. And here's a very, uh, a very fine poem of Wordsworth, which is his Freudian best. And it's called, My Heart Leaps Up. I want you to remember this. This is the line that's in the poem. The child is father of the man. Don't you wish you'd said that? <laughs> that's a poet. <clears throat> words worth. He's worth his words, isn't he? And here it is. My heart leaps up. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is father of the man, and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. What a poem. Brief, it says a lot, it's like a proverb. Very, very nice. So we always start with a poem, and that's our poem for today. Um, and then I go right to patient rounds, because too much of medicine is flat. We try to get to patient care. Now, before I do that, I want to mention one thing. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to convince you residents to go to rural America, and not all of you go to go to Kaiser. Okay? <laughs> That's why I'm here. Rural America welcomes you. They love you. They would do all, bend over backwards to have you. They'll, they'll, they'll afford you. But the problem is, you go to rural America, you don't have help. You feel alone. That's why the robot's there. Via this robot. You can get a pediatric intensivist from Oakland Children's within 15 minutes from their ICU. You can get a neurologist from CPMC for a stroke within 15 minutes. Dr. David Tong, who gave the lecture for you, he works for me. Okay. You can uh, get uh, infectious diseases within 30 minutes. I have four infectious disease consultants available at CPMC. And you can get an adult intensivist. I'm one of them on a call schedule. These four are available to every ICU where we are. 24-7. And we do it for $5,000 a month. That's $60,000 a year. Can you beat that? You can't beat that economy. We're very affordable. That's our secret. You have to make this affordable. We earn for what we do. We do something we bill for. We don't have call schedules. Call schedules waste money. And so we, uh, we bill for what we do. The problem right now is we're not reimbursed well. But if Obama has his way, and telemedicine really comes to its uh, fruition, we will be paid for what we're doing and we'll make it economical. <coughs> but my thesis is we're paid for what we do and we do it well, they're going to ask us to see patients then. That's essentially what it is. Um, these rural hospitals would love to have more physicians. Or their physicians are getting older, they don't have youth, and there's great opportunity. You could easily go to Friend, Nebraska. I was there yesterday giving a robotic demonstration. Pikes Peak. Colorado. I was there two weeks ago. Um, uh, Fortuna. I'm going to be speaking to Fortuna when I fin finish this conference, uh, concluding a contract. They're going to be our sixth hospital. That's up near Eureka. So you see the things that are happening. They need doctors. They don't have young doctors. And um, I could very easily see residents and family practices going to rural areas, being the doctor who's the hospitalist, taking care of inpatients in the ICU, and getting any consultation you want. And when the patients have to be transferred, you transfer them to the consultant. If you can keep them there, you keep them there. You do appropriate medicine. If they stay there, they stay. If they should go, they go. That's your decision. That's why you're a decision maker. Okay. Now with that, a lot to do. Let's make rounds. Um, I'll come back and give you a didactic lecture toward the end. I'd rather go see patients first. Than